So when you're learning a new skill, some really amazing stuff happens. So the lawyers here won't let me mention this guy's name, but we all know the very famous basketball player who dreamed of playing Major League Baseball. He never made it. Speaking of dreams, another famous guy whose name rhymes with go thought he could play football and baseball at the highest level. Apparently he couldn't, at least not for long. So, what makes this guy here think he can switch sports? My best guess, he wants to find out for himself whether he can take the skills that make him great in one sport and move them cross town to another. So he's found a new challenge. Or at the very least, a glorious disaster. Watch it. Uh, got the worst on the track. Mic check, check one, two. If it ain't a check a text, that's all I'm gonna do. Mic check, check one, two. If you ain't talking dollars, I can't understand you. No one wants to hear a story about losers, right? This, friends, is the face of a winner. Drew Carl Lewis Bazanson, professional BMX rider. You know, one of the biggest challenges is you've set this incredibly huge goal, you've dedicated your life, years and years and years of training, you've made massive sacrifices, you go to a competition, you absolutely crush it, and you reach your goal. Now what? For Drew here, that goal was pretty simple stack a bunch of containers up in your backyard and go bigger than pretty much anyone before him had gone on 20-inch wheels. I saw the stars Right from the start Oh The response when Uncontainable came out was pretty crazy, especially from not just the BMX world, but from like the mountain bike world. I definitely rode similar features that they ride on their slope courses, but I was doing it on a much smaller bike. So some of the contest organizers in the mountain bike world reached out to me and said, hey, like, you know, have you ever thought about riding some of our events? You're riding big enough stuff. Definitely for like a couple days after I finished the project, like I had that feeling of contentment. And it's like, it doesn't come very often. Man, like it was, it was definitely a feeling I've never felt before. That can be one of the most devastating moments of an athlete's career because like anything in life, once you have something, it's, it's no longer that meaningful. So if BMX is the old forgotten doll in this analogy, Red Bull Joyride is the bright, shiny new object. Joyride is like combining the energy you have at a packed stadium at a Supercross race. And then mixing it into a mountain bike contest. The whole energy all the way down the hill is intense, like it's insane. Usually at most contests, you can block out what's going on around you and you can solely focus on what you have to do in front of you. But I mean, at Joyride, like, you, you, just, you just can't. It's just like a roaring river on either side of the course. If BMX is too cool and freestyle motocross is too hot, mountain bike slope style is just right. And when it comes to Joyride, podium contenders Thomas Shannon, Nikolai Ragakin, Brandon Semenuk pay their bills by combining the technicality of BMX tricks with the size of FMX. I don't like to use like, oh, this is impossible. I don't want to limit myself. You 
you know what, maybe on this day it's impossible, but if you work towards it, like you can make the impossible possible. Someone will watch my edits now and they're like, you're crazy, you're, you're nuts. Not nuts. They're just seeing like the finished product. They're not seeing the last 20 years of riding a bicycle and I've always just slowly worked my way up. Okay, let's summarize. Different bikes. Different courses. Different competitors. And really no clue how this is going to turn out. 